Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tanvir. Uh, remember, you know, the FSSAI has come out with revised guidelines that would uh, not only impact uh, food tech players, but also online groceries. Uh, and uh, joining me is, uh, as you mentioned, the CEO and co-founder of Grofers, Albinder Dhinsa, on the show. Uh, Albinder, thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us uh, on ET Now. Uh, firstly, you know, what changes really for players like you after the revised guidelines by FSSAI? Because the authority is saying that the focus really is on safety of food and other products that reach the end consumer. Thanks, Rahul, for having me. Uh, so nothing really changes uh, for players like us in the grocery space because primarily what we are selling to customers is uh, packaged food and over there we already meet the freshness guidelines that have been issued. They are similar to the ones that FSSI had already advised us that would be coming down the road. And I think they're already compliant with everything that they are asking from delivery and freshness standpoint. I think uh, we have been very vigilant in uh, making sure that the merchant partners we work with, we work with over 2,000 of them on the platform, uh, that they are also compliant in guidelines. Uh, I think what would, uh, would actually be beneficial for the overall ecosystem because I think the customers also have a higher trust in online platform if they know that you know, these guidelines are something that we have to obviously meet. Uh, as FSSI gets more proactive with ensuring food safety for the customers, you know, a large part of the problem in the ecosystem is you know, the loose food gets sold up. All right. You know, while you say that nothing really changes for you from now on, uh, but seems like, you know, FSSI also has indicated uh, that it wants to ensure that there is a lot more compliance, you know, scrutiny also at supply chains. Could you take us through what Grofers has been internally doing all this while? And, you know, would, uh, would the cost of compliance also, so to say, increase with this revised guidelines? All right, so that was Albinder Dhinsa uh, really uh, taking us by the key highlights. He says nothing would really change for players like Grofers, but the big takeaway will be uh, the fact that they will have to put these systems in place uh, to ensure that uh, you know there are no leakages and food security rem uh, remains on top of the priority to them. Uh, with that, it's back to you in the studio, Stanvir. Rahul, for that. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Rahul. We let you go with that. Uh I think uh, Mubina joins in for the very latest on NSE Commodities. Then. Can we go across to Mubina? Well, precious metals certainly have broken out of their slumber because uh, we have seen quite an uptick coming by in the last couple of days. For now on the NSC, however, gold and silver futures seem to be trading more or less flat. Very, very minor moves and that are very mixed trends as well because while NSC silver had been gaining, we had NSC gold just losing a little bit, but very, very minor moves. Nothing really to talk about over there. But international gold prices, interestingly, that as well has been steady despite of whatever's been happening in the equity markets, despite the fact that there has been a rebound. Gold prices have stayed steady at that $1,278 per ounce level and that is a six-month high. A couple of factors. First up, that the U.S. partial government shutdown is going to extend into January because the next Senate meeting is going to be only after 31st of December. Secondly, the consumer confidence number for the month gone by has shown that it has been at the slowest pace in the last three years. So that as well has essentially dampened economic sentiment on the macros of the country, which in turn has also uh, turned on that risk of sentiment. So that as well is something that's keeping gold prices at their six-month high, despite the fact that equities have more or less, at least in the U.S., recovered. So international gold prices continue to stay at the multi-month high. NSE's gold and silver at this point of time a little mixed in trade. All right, I understand we have Albinder Dinsa back on the phone line. Um, uh, Albinder, continuing the conversation forward, uh, uh, could you take us through, you know, the fact that uh, FSSAI has clearly mentioned that they will uh, increase the vigilance as far as food safety is concerned. So until now, you know, what uh, processes has Grofers put in place? Uh, uh, because you've been around for quite a while now, you are one of the largest uh, uh, player uh, in, you know, in several markets that you operate. Yeah, I think uh, FSSI has been, uh, you know, they've been conducting regular checks and they've actually helped us uh, 
sort of get a better understanding of what the regulatory environment around food safety is. Uh, as a result, like a lot of the things that we supply, obviously they they go through like you know uh, uh, strict testing from the part where we actually work with a lot of manufacturers and suppliers to make sure their facilities are compliant with FSSA. Uh, we not only sort of look at them and say you know just show us what your FSSA registration is, but we actually work with a lot of partners to uh, make sure that the products that they are making. Uh, are actually compliant uh, with the FSSI guidelines, and obviously keeping the consumer safety in mind is is something which is of uh, very high importance to us as a platform because our reputation depends on it. Uh, so even if you look at well, some of our top 140 manufacturers that we work with, we not only help them with FSSI clearances, but we also have partnered with players like uh, Indian Medical Association to basically do product testing and get. uh regular sampling uh tested from these facilities to make sure that the products are very very good in quality all right i sense that you are you are not really worried uh, you know with these new guidelines but any pain points uh, you know uh, in terms of compliance or increasing the compliance burden uh, uh, that this move will have on uh, a player like yours I don't think that there is a there's really like that big a compliance burden, right? It is in our best interest to sort of do the right thing for the customer. Uh, where we do run into a challenge is that uh, a lot of the regulations don't really apply or are not really enforced at uh, local level with very very small margins, which basically reduces our ability to work with them, right? Uh, and I think uh, that is where a lot of the regulatory focus needs to also be, uh, because the more merchants that uh, uh, that the regulatory bodies can sort of make aware of the fact that they need to be compliant with these things, it becomes easier for us to approach them, work with them, and actually help them expand their income level as well. All right, uh, uh, you know, I'll be in the last couple of questions. Uh, over the last few days, we have seen uh, e-tailers, e-commerce players grapple with a lot of regulatory uncertainty. As an entrepreneur yourself in the space, how do you really view the regulatory regime broadly? You know, let's let's move away from FSSAI, but broadly for startups, for e-tailers, uh, uh, has has it become uh, a little difficult to operate uh, and do business uh, in the current regulatory regime that is seeing a lot of clarifications by the government and DIP? So I think uh, so far, if you look at the track record, it has actually been getting easier because I think there has been more and more clarity uh, on what the existing regulations were uh, and sort of how they apply to different companies. Uh, over even right now, we're still in a little bit of a wait and see mode because we want to sort of see uh, the impact of this uh, and try to assess, you know, what is the impact of the existing changes. and whether they are really markedly different from what the previous uh, uh, regulation used to be what is uh, you know what is uh, what would not be great is if things are changing suddenly and because that causes a lot of difference for uh, a lot of our partners a lot of the merchants that we work with a lot of the vendors that we work with to suddenly become compliant it becomes very very difficult for them right uh, so what we would like to see is more sort of steady uh, a steady regulatory environment we don't obviously want sudden policy shift uh but i think in the current environment we are still trying to assess like how does it actually impact player like us uh i'm sure like it has a uh, from what i've read and heard it has a much larger impact for some of the larger horizontal retailers uh but i think for us the biggest concern is you know how does this sort of impact some of the smaller vendors and merchants that we work with because some of them also have partnerships and uh, you know uh, interests with the larger retailers as well got it i'll i'll have to in interrupt you albinder there before i let you go lastly uh, you know while you're saying some concerns remain how would you react to remarks uh, by the likes of future retailers kishore biani who says online players grocery players may have to shut shop uh, uh, in the current regulatory regime that really operates uh i think mr biani has been saying that for quite a few years uh but uh i think uh, nothing of that sort is really going to happen uh i mean if you look at it uh we uh, us and most of the online grocery players we already had the 100% fpi approval from the government uh, couple of years ago uh so as such uh, i don't think this really impacts the way that we do business currently right what we would like is more clarity so that you know we don't have to make changes to the way we operate 
uh, just to be compliant on something which is more of a regulatory issue than a customer-centric issue.